No, I'm sorry, you must have misunderstood our advertisement. Hello? Sorry, I'll be just a moment. Listen, if you're looking for something real, whatever that means, you've got the wrong number. Yes? Yes, uh, I'm looking for- Oh, let me guess. You're looking for the perfect woman to fall in love with, get married, have 2.5 children, a Springer Spaniel, some cat's iron lawn ornaments, a deer, a cute little George Kenny, bright Christmas colors, a ramp style house in the suburbs. Well, actually. And you want to grow old together, take a long look at the beach, and when you're in confidence, you know, you want her to take care of you. No, I must be in the wrong place. Wait! <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's been an unnerving day. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for a relatively brief affair. Six months to a year, fun and exciting, but no, kidding ourselves is going to last that sort of thing. Really? You're sure this is what you want? Yes, I've tried other dating services, but they're always trying to match perfect people, and when I go out with a woman, she starts talking in love after two weeks, and she uses words like commitment, and I just get this panic and I break out into hives, and so I thought your ad sounded more realistic. So you're an emotional coward. I suppose so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never opened up enough to be hurt or disillusioned. That's fine. You have her with, of course? Yes. Don't refer not to. Good. We're not looking for tabs. Just decent people who understand the brevity of attraction. Yes, the transitory nature of all things. We're born alone, we die alone, and all in between is ephemeral. Yes. And we've decided true communication between people is impossible. Yes. Because if I say I was by a dog this morning, you might see a German Shepherd when actually a small but vicious schnauzer. That's that's odd. That's just what I was going to say. I knew it. It was no taking down dictation right from your brain. Yes, I felt that too. I you let down a bit. Let me explain our process to you. First, I'll take a detailed notes about you. Then I'll look through our files and find something that's obviously wrong for you. But that we will immediately feel attracted to. Good so far. <laughs> yes, I'm glad. This attraction and attendant excitement will be based, of course, in fact. She is so lost to me, you would never speak of love and commitment. You do understand. You'll both know that all you're in this for is the fun. Yeah, you see fun. You do seem to be an ideal candidate. Now, our fee is $100 per short term affair. Is that too much for you? No. It would be nice to know that you're free of entanglement. Exactly. Good. Let me get down some final statistics. First and last name? Mark Fanberg. <laughs> Age? 34. You don't look that old. Where are you from? Oh, I was born in Chicago, but we live in New York. Yes, your accent. Wait, you live in New York? How can you detect my accent? I'm from Los Angeles. I thought you had a Californian accent. <laughs> Californians have no regional accent. You speak American again. American standard is a fallacy. <laughs> All accents are regional. What, did you major in linguistics? Yes, <laughs> at UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> and your education? MA in philosophy from Cornell. Very nice. Occupation? I sell health insurance. <laughs> really? That's a waste of a good education. Well, what are you doing with your education? I'm glad to be helping people find others who are obviously wrong for them, so they can avoid the necessity Growing of... up. Actually, I was going to say the inevitability of heartbreak, which is both painful... Irrelevant from the larger scheme of things. Yes, well, I think... Death. <laughs> yes. Would you please quit finishing my sentences? That's annoying, isn't it? That's the understatement of the millennium. Right. Something you said a moment ago. There's this red flashing light in my brain. Do you believe that growing up is synonymous with being open to love and commitment? No, it just slips out. Don't you believe that love and commitment are meant? Of course. That old till death do us part. How would you know what you feel like in five years, in a month, even tomorrow? Jeez, people are so stupid, promising everything when they don't even know the moment they're in. You let someone invade your space and then taking advantage. And then you're really hurt because you're able to get over them and get on with your life. Right. Right. So 
what are your interests? Um, films, music, folk dancing. Folk dancing? Isn't that for old people? Shows how little you know. People of all ages folk dance. I see. What sort of music do you like? World music, Asian, African, Indian. All the dominant music, all the folk music. You don't like jazz? I find jazz boring. Boring? How could you find jazz boring? It's too in right now. Oh, I see. You're cultivating a rebel image. I'm not cultivating an image at all. I like what I like. What do you use for like reading? Aristotle, Nietzsche, Wittgenstein? No. At the moment, I'm reading Boswell's Life of Johnson. You have odd tastes for a person your age. You're pretty judgmental. Do you have a problem with that? Do you think I shouldn't be a human being with opinions just because I'm gathering information on you? I should like everything you like? I did think you'd be more objective. After all, I'm a prospective client. Oh, really? Prospective? You're backing out then? What are you talking about? I haven't paid anything yet. I see. It always comes down to the money with you, doesn't it? No, I said $100 is fine. It's fine. When you go to a restaurant, you cut <laughs> everything down to the penny, don't you? And if your date swordfish is $2 more than your salmon, you charge your point. And if she's 13 cents short, because she doesn't happen to carry around as much money as you, you hold a grudge. So she pays you back those 13 cents. Now, why would I worry about 13 cents? Okay, now, about 50 cents can, like, bother me, but 13 cents? <laughs> Please, don't be so touchy. Well, who's touchy? Just take notes. I don't have all night. Neither do I. So what sort of films do you like? <coughs> I'm afraid to tell you. Go ahead. I won't say a word. Well, I'm waiting, pencil boy. I like thrillers. What? You see, I shouldn't have told you. <laughs> no, it's fine. Thrillers, jeez. Why should you like thrillers? You like to do this to them, don't you? Get them to reveal themselves, and soon as they open up, you pull out the old Girl Scout diamond. Not at all. <laughs> this is my job. How can I find the wrong person for you if I don't know your preferences? Mm. Why don't we go for a drink? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> There's a cute little bistro around the corner. Chess bread, I would be caught dead there with those phony Toulouse Latte posters and candles. Okay, how about the, the ugly deli down the street? Their coffee is at least three days old. Their bagels are petrified. Okay. Well, how about my place then? Where do you live? The village. West. Slip on the soap in your bathtub. Heck, it in the tiles and die. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, this is the one killer in America. You're either an idiot or a liar. I always tell the truth. You look better if you let your hair hang loose. <laughs> Thanks for the fashion tip. You always wear brown shoes with blue pants. Do you always wear orange lipstick? Have you considered hair implants for your premature bald spot? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Don't say anything nice to me, I won't have it. Well, if you want your stuff, let's be too. <laughs>